Yes, family, we're at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. And what you're looking at is the great Black Star family. It's like Black Star Pan-African community. Vision for the future. In the tropical rainforest, so we have the wood. We can care the drums. But on the other hand, they are located in the dry savanna. Okay. Yes, so they don't have the wood we have for making the drums. So they also rely on other things. So what he's using is that is uh, is they they use uh, some trees and calabash. That is what they use for their instrument of music. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so please let's move on. Pictures, no pictures. No, you can't. Okay, so this is the mausoleum of our first president. And I said earlier on that he was buried at three different places. You know, he was our leader till 1966 when his government was ousted in a military coup d'etat. He was not even in Ghana when the coup took place. He left the shore of this country on a peace mission in Vietnam. So on his way going, he made a stopover in China. So that's when he was informed that some members from his army, supported by the police, have staged a coup at his back. For security reasons, he could not come back. He was exiled in Guinea. So he spent the rest of his life in Guinea. He was there till 1971. He was taken in. They took him to Romania for medical treatment. Unfortunately, he died from prostate cancer at the age of 63. So the remains was flown back to Guinea. Over there, the body was embalmed and he was lying in a metal casket and he was put on a public display. Three months in Guinea. After three months, the remains was brought back to Ghana. At the time he died, his mother was then alive, and he was the only child and the only son. So the mother used to cry every blessed day that the remains should be brought back to home. So when the remains were finally brought back, then it was conveyed to his hometown, kept over there close to 20 years. So after 20 years, that's when discussion came up strongly in Ghana that looking at the effort he has done for Ghana and being the father of the nation, it would be ideal to be given a befitting barrier. At the same time, this place was also established and commissioned by our former late president, Jerry John Rawlings. 
At the completion of this place, they went for the remains. It was brought down here. But unfortunately, the body started showing a sign of deteriorating. So that's when they decided to bury him finally. So he was transferred from the original casket that kept his body for 20 years into a woody one as tradition demands and finally buried right over here. So in all, we said he's been buried three times and this place is the third, hopefully the last resting place of Dr. Juan Mugu Kruma. The monument is designed by a Ghanaian architect known as Dr. Don Atta. The work was done by the Chinese with Italian marble. Due to his passion at promoting unity for Africa, he married to an Egyptian woman. And his marriage was politically arranged by the then president of Egypt, Dr. Gamal Abdul Nasser. So in 2007, the wife was also sick whilst she was in Egypt. But her last will on her sick bed was to be buried close to the husband. Eventually, she died in Egypt, but her remains were brought and buried right over here. So that's why we have the two. Right I like the way you snuck that in there. Yeah. I like the way you snuck that in there. That's cool. Okay. Yes. Um, oh yeah, that's always okay. a good I'm thing. That's always positive. You yes. can't go wrong with yeah, that. Nkuma was a great man. Then I'll talk about it. Yes, okay. One of our best in history. Especially modern day, modern day times.